Hello, welcome to the Workforce Connection. The Workforce Connection is a co-production of the Forver Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Bristol Community College, and Forver Community Media. You know, every month what we do with the show is we spotlight the issues and the events and the opportunities that impact the Bristol County workforce and area employees. My name is Rob Mellion. I'm the CEO of the Forver Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and I'm the host of the show here. Today we're going to do something that I think is going to be very interesting for all of you who are watching. We're going to catch up with the Catch Institute. And I say that because in our very first segment of the Workforce Connection, we introduced the Catch Institute, and a lot has happened since that very first show. I can't believe that we're in our second season, halfway through our second season right now. So helping us to catch up with Catch <coughs> is Terry Romanovich. She is Associate Vice President of Workforce Development at Bristol Community College. And we have Chef John Caresmo, who is the director of the Catch Institute. And I want to welcome both of you. Thank you. To Thank you, Bob. Another edition. So I think the first question that we have to ask, the obvious one, what's new with the Catch Institute? Well, there's a lot that's new with the, uh, with the Catch Institute. We basically spent the first year and a half uh, laying the groundwork, developing the uh, courses for it, uh, deciding the directions that we were, were going to go in, uh, hiring a full-time faculty person, uh, reaching out to the various venues that we anticipate ser serving, uh, working with the non-credit side workforce development. So there are a whole whole lot of things that uh, that have been percolating in the past year and a half with it. And we'll get into the details as we go into the show today, but maybe we should just take a step back and Define talk it. about what is the Catch Institute. The, the Catch Institute uh, let, let me step even further back. Uh, originally, there were a number of uh, hospitality and tourism classes and programs within Division Three, the business division of the college, and the culinary arts program was housed in Division Two uh, since, its, uh, since its formation back in 1985. And with the uh, big push going on in tourism and the advent of, of gaming coming to Massachusetts, uh, it was felt that the, the college, the community, and the, and the Commonwealth at large could be better served by bringing all of those programs together under one umbrella, uh, where they really should have been from the very beginning. So basically we created the Catch Institute, Culinary Arts, Tourism, Casino, and Hospitality uh, to coordinate all of the programs, to be able to present a, uh, a, a variety of programs all geared for the hospitality industry and to prepare ourselves to, to serve the uh, anticipated demands that the, uh, the advent of these casinos is going to bring to the Commonwealth. Now obviously we're talking about uh, the Catch Institute at Bristol Community College. Where exactly is the Catch Institute located? I mean that's I think a, an interesting question because it's everywhere. Like, well I guess I mean, my first answer was going to be it's located wherever I'm sitting at the moment kind of thing. Uh, we, are, we are housed obviously at the Fall River campus, but we're working very closely with the Duval Street site. We will be doing presentations at the uh, Attleboro Taunton site, and we certainly hope to get into the New Bedford area. So we're, we're going to look to eventually be able to serve the entire Bristol Community College community. You know, Terry, I what think the physical site um, that we're looking at right now is trying to blend what we're doing on the workforce site Exactly. Um, on Duval Street and look at housing some of the physical infrastructure, especially around the gaming uh, tables, to be able to do a nice match of serving the employer from what might be a rapid response uh, workforce training and then blending it into a bridge into the academic site side of the house. So and, that's, and that's what I was going to ask yeah. you is uh, taking a step back again so that people can understand uh, the whole system that is Bristol Community College. You know, we're talking about the Duval site. Mm -hmm. That's the workforce center right, right. Uh, located on Duval Street. And what you're essentially talking here is a potential blending and using of that facility with the Catch Institute. That's correct. Yeah, so I think the philosophy of the college is this is um, an emerging, especially the gaming component of an emerging industry for our region and how are we working collaboratively together to train people and educate people so that they can then go and take on these jobs that are starting to emerge 
and also those that have been in existence for a while. So John and I have been working collaboratively together over the last several months trying to design what are the elements that can be put in what we would consider the workforce, some people call it the non-credit side of the house, with the understanding that an individual might come in that way into the system, but we want it to be a feeder into the credit degree side of the house. So how do we best do that? So people in your listening community now and employers start to see we're building a credential, stackable credentials for them so that at the end of the day they see someone who's been trained and educated by Bristol Community College to support their industry. Yeah, because that leads to a question I've been thinking about and listening to you right now is, you know, how do you ensure that the Catch Institute actually meets the needs of industry? And how, how is that done? How is that rolled into your curriculum? Okay. Originally, again, going back to where the business courses were in Division Three, Culinary Arts and Division Two, and bringing them together under one umbrella, uh, we looked at the courses themselves, we looked at the programs themselves, and there was more or less a smattering of degrees. There were, there were a variety, like three or four different degrees and certificates, uh, in addition to the Culinary Arts degree. So what I did basically was we, we've eliminated all of those previously existing degrees and certificates and created one degree, Associate of Applied Science in Hospitality. And with that, we've created four main uh, divisions within that degree. So a student can study uh, foundations of hospitality management, food service management, uh, tourism, and casino within that one single degree. So all of the students who come into that program will get a introductory education to all of the areas, which will then allow them to make a more informed choice as to which area they would specifically like to go into. So what we did was we looked at the courses, we got rid of some courses, we got rid of some certificates. Uh, we tried to make the program more relevant to the student who's coming through today. And as Terry indicated, we, we basically are gonna be serving two different constituencies. There's the constituency that I expect who's going to be coming directly into the program and who's going to be looking for the associate degree. And regardless of, of whom I speak to as far as employers, and I give them the choice of would they rather have a trained employee or a educated one, they always seem to opt for the educated one. Because if there's any specific training that needs to be done on site, a lot of places can establish that. So for, for our younger student coming out of high school and the student who's beginning their career, certainly the credential side is, is going to be the, the more advantageous uh, uh, per place for the person to go into. Then there's always the person who's coming back for retraining, people who lose their jobs, people who are tired of the particular career that they're in. For people like that, we'll, we will be offering several of the non-credit segments, which will be shorter bursts uh, of, of education, but we'll train them for a specific facet of the, of the industry. Now, over the last few months, there have been some noticeable changes in gaming uh, throughout the state of Massachusetts. For one thing, we now know that there's the Plainfield site that has yep. been decided upon, so we know that there's a slot parlor that's for real. Um, we also know what's developing in Region A. For the most part, we know what's developing in Region B of the state. Uh, for the most part. What is Bristol Community College and the Ketch Institute uh, doing to make connections with the gaming institutions that are going to be in the uh, state to help fill the positions that are going to be needed? Well, the, fir the first one, as you said, the, we're sure of the Plainville site. So we're sure of the site, we're sure of the entity. The others are you know, at the beck and call of the Gaming Commission to see when and right. if they, they grant a particular license to a particular uh, entity. Yeah, we're going to be knowing, I mean, some of those other answers we're going to be knowing in the next couple of months. We can, I'm we sure can you guys only, are already talking. We can only hope. Uh, yes. But getting back to Plainville, once Plainville was announced, uh, we, had, we had met with them previously, uh, six or seven months prior to uh, the announcement of the license, uh, and we had done a job fair up there with them in conjunction with the uh, Penn, Penn Gaming and uh, to build those bridges that you talk about that are so necessary in the industry. Once the license was granted, uh, then they began holding meetings and both Terry and I have been meeting with them uh, and we envision this as, this is gonna be a microcosm of what we're gonna be doing statewide. Uh, since this is only a slot parlor, and I don't mean to say only a slot parlor in the sense, but it's not going to be a full uh, scale destination casino that's gonna require 
three or four thousand employers, uh, employees. Uh, this will give us the opportunity to basically cut our teeth on what needs to be done and how we can best serve the entity. Now, as I understand mm -hmm. it, uh, even though it's going to be a slot parlor, there's still a lot of support mechanisms Absolutely. that are associated. Maybe we should talk about that because that comes into play with what Catch is all about mm -hmm. because really you're the whole uh, universe of hospitality. Correct. The only, the only thing, for the most part, that's not going to be needed at, at the Plainville site will be hotel people because there is no plans at the present moment for any, any type of uh, uh, hotel at the site. But everything else, food service personnel, security, maintenance, facility people, mm -hmm. uh, greeters, cash handlers, business people. Uh, so basically everything else we do at Bristol Community College, even, even those programs that are not within the purview of the Catch Institute. Uh, certainly people who have a great background in computers, people who have a background in law enforcement. Controllers. Controllers, Aren't absolutely. Uh, so so there, will be, there will be a, uh, a smattering of all of the jobs, because we're looking at about 400 to 500 additional jobs, uh, jobs. at the Plainville site. Uh, and then there's going to be about 150, I believe, of the uh, racing people who will be kept on. And and I think the nice part about what's going on with that industry is that they've actually formed a mass um, casino career training um, institute, and it's a collaboration between workforce investment boards, career centers, community colleges to sort of look at how are we collectively building a workforce plan to address the emerging industry that's coming up under gaming. So the Mass Gaming Commission has actually been a part of formulating this team that's working together. So when we go and we meet with the employer now, it's a team of people saying, how are we going to recruit? Who are the individuals out there that make sense for this industry? What are the job opportunities out there? And how are we all going to move forward as a system so everybody understands how people are being trained and educated for these new jobs? What are the new jobs? And so when you talked before how are we working with employers, I think it's critical that employers are understanding that this is a new initiative for Massachusetts and that it does entail a workforce plan and so the state is actually spearheading this across the state. And which that's is, what I find to be a very interesting is, is model. It is interesting. Because it seems to me that my observations in the past has been that it's been a bottom-up model rather than a top-down model. Here you've got the state that is initiating leading it, yes. and leading it and making sure that it is done right the first time right. where in the past the state is probably left in a position where it's trying to fix a lot of problems that have developed as a result of it being a bottom-up Well, I, I think probably the, the, the need for that approach is because of the regulation in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, as anybody will tell you, this is one of the more highly regulated industries uh, in, that will be in mm -hmm. the Commonwealth yeah, and in the country. medical, yes. So if, if right. the state did not initiate this and step in from the beginning, there'd be a lot of backpedaling of trying to correct things that, that, are, uh, that would go wrong. No, it's really interesting. So obviously, Gaming is more than dealers. We've we've gaming gotten is much get, more than yes. dealers. And uh, what about the culinary side here? You, you know, we've been talking about gaming, but what's going to be happening and what's developing on the culinary side of the Catch Institute? Well, two two statements that I was at two different meetings, one in Boston and one at Plainville, and I, I what I heard was music to my ears. They said that the most difficult positions to fill would be the culinary positions. Uh, they indicated that they were having trouble now statewide filling all of the positions that they needed. And once these operations came online, they anticipated uh, you know, a lot more stress on, the, uh, on, on filling those numbers. So I think that's great. The only problem that you know, myself and other schools do, who do educating in education in culinary arts is it's, it's not a program that you can just expand exponentially by adding on additional classrooms. You're talking about the, the need for facilities and, and kitchens, which are long-term to build, which are expensive to build. So you can't respond by building three or four more kitchens to meet the demand. Certainly, you can put another couple of students in, in every cohort, uh, but I envision that for the foreseeable future, the, the culinary positions will be difficult to fill. Not difficult to put people into, but difficult to find enough qualified well, individuals. Well, I think that's really important for people listening and. Uh, you know, watching the show, that there's opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
and, no question about and it. it isn't just you got to think across the board. I mean, we're talking about the gaming industry, but there, you know, there are cafeterias and major businesses. Correct. Uh, same thing. Uh, you've got hospitals. Uh, it, it's definitely an area that can be filled. We're going to go to a quick break for a public service announcement. When we come back, I'd like to talk to you a lot more about the details uh, associated with the Catch Institute mm -hmm. and where you guys are going to be going in the future. So. Okay. For those of you who are watching, please stay tuned. We'll be right back after this public service announcement. The uh, our flagship uh, staple thing that you probably have to eat when you come here is either the American Dream Burger, which is uh, a bacon cheeseburger with uh, molasada buns, or like a Portuguese steak burrito, or the chicken Mozambique burrito, because it's a classic to this area. My name is Alexander Tavares, and I'm the head chef at Viva Comida. We're at 1345 Pleasant Street, 4 of Mass, uh, the heart of the Flint. Uh, Viva Comida is a restaurant me and my partner Louis Silva came up with. Coming from this area, you know, uh, things aren't always easy. Things aren't handed to you either, you know. I've worked for everything that I've accomplished in my life. I graduated from Durfee High School in 03. Uh, I went to BCC around 03, 04. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life just yet. I got into culinary arts, which was always my true passion. I just wasn't sure about the possibilities once you graduated and stuff like that. Being the uh, culinary arts department at BCC was awesome because you got to experiment with pretty much anything and everything. Every week we would do a different nationalities cuisine, so I'm pretty well versed in not just American, Portuguese, and Spanish because I was trained French. It's German, Asian, um, and every other aspect of cooking you can possibly learn. Chef Carissimo was a, a great impact on my life. He was probably one of the greatest chefs to date I've ever worked for. You know, he really pushed me not only to be able to do things, but he always stressed that um, it's not enough to be able to do something. You need to be able to know what you're doing and what's going on, the who, what, and why, and where, to be able to have an intelligent conversation with somebody about what you're producing, you know, not to just be able to do it. I probably wouldn't be half the chef I am now without his influence in my life. You know, it was a really a positive influence in my life, and it really pushed me to get as much as he could out of me. Yeah, here at Viva Comida, we just try to rethink your food. We just spin a little twist on uh, some of four of his favorite dishes, such as chicken Mozambique, Portuguese steak plates. We just uh, throw them in burritos, so it's uh, everything people love about burritos and Portuguese steak plates rolled into one, basically. I wanted to give back to the neighborhood that basically raised me, so I wanted to do something positive. The future of Viva Comida is the uh, sky's the limit. Right now, we're in week one of being open. Uh, eventually, if things go as well as we hope, uh, we'd like to open up a second and a third and maybe just keep going. Maybe even be international at some point, maybe uh, go to Azores or Portugal or something. <laughs> Welcome back to the Workforce Connection. Again, I'm Rob Million, I'm your host, and we have with us Chef Caresimo, who is the director of the Catch Institute, and we also have Terry Romanovich, who is the Associate Vice President of Workforce Development at Bristol Community College. And we're catching up with the Catch Institute here. And it's been a very interesting show so far, talking about great opportunities mm -hmm. for people all through the viewing audience here. Uh, we talked a little bit so far about the potential for lab experiences here, because quite frankly, having hands-on experience is really important. Can you elaborate on what types of lab opportunities have been created through the Catch Institute for students? Well, basically, if we look at the culinary arts program, the, the lab experiences that are in the in culinary program uh, have been there since the creation of the degree. So those, those are basically the same. And our, our uh, curriculum is, I, I like to call it live, because we basically change that, mm. uh, modify it every semester to meet uh, ongoing trends, things that are happening in restaurants, things that are not used anymore, we sort of pull out unless they're really uh, important to the foundation of a student's education. So that has been pretty pretty uh, static, if you will. Within the Catch Institute, uh, we will be doing training in various casino games. We are in the uh, somewhat final stages of the planning stage of creating the uh, casino lab at Duval Street, which will basically be a, uh, a miniature of a, uh, of a casino with uh, table games. There's not going to be any slot machines in there, uh, but we will have roulette, blackjack, poker tables, and craps table. So we will be teaching the students how to deal the various games, and that's a term that I learned as I got involved in this. You don't, uh, all of the games are called dealing. 
uh, regardless of what the game is. So there will be hands-on experience in that. We are also in the process of, of planning a hospitality lab, uh, which will be a small miniature of a, of a hotel lobby uh, where there will be a counter for a check-in and a bedroom to go over some of the housekeeping things in there. So those are, those are the two areas that we will be providing some hands-on training. Uh, and the, the further hope is that we will be able to develop a relationship with some of the area hotels. We will be able to bring the students into, into the hotel to get a live first-hand experience. We can do that in the kitchen when we do our lunches in the Grady Dining Room, we do our functions. It's difficult to replicate that uh, with a hotel, and because of the regulations, it's impossible to replicate that. Uh, I don't see us running any gambling nights in the, in the foreseeable future where we'll be bringing people in and playing. Uh, I think we'd have the uh, state troopers visiting us very shortly if we tried that. On the hospitality side, what about uh, internships? On the hospitality side, all of the four degree components have uh, a co-op experience. So the students will be required to go out and uh, either get a job or we will attempt to place them uh, in something. And it certainly needs to be related to the particular area uh, that they are getting their degree major in. Right, because I know, uh, for example, hotels such as, uh, I, I know, for example, that there are hotels in Newport that have partnered with Bristol Community mm -hmm. College mm -hmm. uh, where students are getting a co-op experience. So it's, you need it. I mean, today's absolutely, market, absolutely you need a resume that demonstrates that you have hands-on experience. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that practical experience is important. Right. And unfortunately, what it does, it's, you know, the student can come in all, all full of great expectations and have a passion for it. And, you know, they go through the classwork, they go through whatever we give them at school, and then they actually get out into the industry and find out this is not really what I, what I bargained for. This is not something that I right. want to spend the rest of my life in. So that, that internship really provides a, a dose of reality. Uh, one of the things that we talk about when we talk about the casino jobs, and you know, we, we did this yesterday at a class that I was at, uh, we tell them that it's a 24-7, 365 a day operation. Mm -hmm. And they all know that, they hear that, but they all think it's going to be the person next to them who's going to be working on Christmas Day and Mother's Day and so on. So. Now, in the first segment, too, we talked about the uh, non-credit workforce training that is provided through CATCH. Can you elaborate on that? Well, again, part of our plan is to work very closely with Terry and the workforce development and to be able to provide as much uh, non-credit training as possible. And Terry has developed a plan that I think she'd like to speak about. So what we're trying to do on the workforce side is to take an individual and give them an introduction to the industry. So give them a little bit of exposure to the culinary side of the house as well as the casino side, as well as the hospitality side, and prepare them for an entry level position within the industry itself. And, so, and with that, what we're trying to do is give them a taste of it all so that they can apply for these jobs, work with them. We'll be working with the career center, as you know. And mm -hmm. a lot of what the state is trying to do is make these be 500 new jobs and to really try to address some of the unemployment levels in, the, in Massachusetts. Yes. So for John and I to be working together on building this bridge is so critical to not only the career path for anybody out there who's interested in the industry, but also to validate that we are trying to get this un underemployed population back at work and on a career path that's going to give them a sustainable wage. So we've sort of developed an introduction to the industry and what's been really nice is we've done it in partnership with the chef so that eventually if, as, we, as we transition people they'll also have the skills that might replace some of the credit courses that are in the degree program. So we're sort of tag teaming it together so that we're doing workforce development, getting them into the industry with the intention of saying this is a career pathway and we want to see you continue on. And the gaming industry as well well as hospitality because they are 24-7 jobs as John said they lend themselves to work part-time work full-time but have a night shift and come to class during the day we're trying to be as flexible as we can on when we're offering this battery of education and training so mm -hmm. that people can then continue the the realm because what I think we want to get out to anyone listening is that we want people to come and get in and get invested in the industry because we think it's really a growing industry we know there's local needs we know that with the casino there are going to be even more jobs but we want them to see it as a 
career pathway. And that applies to the, the logical follow-up question here is who's the candidate for these non-credit courses? So what we're looking at, the target population are the un underemployed. Uh, we'd like to see a lot of veterans come back and take advantage of this opportunity in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. We think it's a real good opportunity for women. And so it's really going to be those people. We'd like to look at people who are close to getting their high school diploma and add that certification within our track so and we're working in collaboration with the Career Center for the funding piece of it so that we build something that is supported by for people who are unemployed and then to work in collaboration like I said with John to make sure that the credentialing continues them on to this career pathway. So I think it's not only us, but I think the state in general is trying to create that pathway for veterans, for women, for the un underemployed, and to really add that high school credential as part of it so that that's just a part of what we're doing. Because as John said, this re we really want to build this into the um, continued education of anybody uh, who comes in. I like to think of Bristol Community College as the gap filler. Yes, absolutely. And, and one of the points. This school's in the trenches. One, one of the points that Terry made as far as people being able to continue their employment, uh, one of the things I did when I created the course schedule for the Catch Institute is it's a three day a week schedule. So the students will know from day one when they come into the program mm -hmm. what courses they will be taking in this fall, in the spring, in the fall of next year, in the spring of the year after that. So it's basically designed as a cohort model so that the students travel through the program together. And the, the program is laid out, as I said, for the next two years. The other thing is I'm planning two starts a year. There'll be a fall start and a spring start. So a student's not going to be tied into the traditional schedule where the program starts, like the culinary arts program, and that's because of the site, where the program only starts in the fall. Right. So students will have the option of coming in in September and graduating the following two, two, two Mays from then, or coming in in January and, and finishing up in the following semester. Yeah, that leads to the question, you know, I know a lot of people who are watching the show here who are underemployed, meaning that they would like to be in a better position than what they're in right now, or uh, those who are, you know, in between jobs. You know, what's the time frame here? You know, we, you talked a little bit about it uh, just now, but if somebody really puts everything into it, you know, well, what are you potentially talking about? The, the least amount of time that they'd be able to complete it because of the sequentialing of the courses is two full years. So that'll be four semesters. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of our students come to us with developmental needs. So they either need work in remedial English, writing, arithmetic. So for those people, it will entail an additional semester. So they'll be here at least five semesters. But the good thing about that is because of my plan starts in September and in January, uh, unlike the culinary where if a student comes in needing developmental work, they're here for an, another whole year. And I know we're running low on time here, uh, but on the issue of developmental skills, we can't, in my opinion, you can't understate how important it is for students to gain expertise on those issues. Absolutely. Because that's what makes them employable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you can't, you know, you can't brush that aside. It's really important as part of the curriculum. You brush that aside. You're correct. And I think from the workforce training, for those listeners who want to come in through that door, um, we're hoping to kick that off um, either this summer or in the fall. We're anticipating that uh, we want to be in full gear as uh, Plainville is rolling out and what is happening over there so that for those people who are unemployed and have uh, limited unemployment benefits and they want to come for a 20 possibly a 20 week, week um, Jumpstart program that, that that's being fully designed with, um, with both parties so that they can do this and then move into the credit side of the house. So we're actually building it so we can tag team each other. So as they finish the works side, workforce side, they can move directly in. So I think if anybody is interested and want to hear more about it, call the college. Um, info is the extension. So info is the extension. Because I was going to ask, how do you enroll for the non-credits info. Yes. With, the, with the credit side, you certainly call the college, and my extension is 2111. Great. Well, we're there. Uh, we're at the end of the show here, and I want to thank both of you for coming Our in and Our talking pleasure. about the Catch Institute. And for those of you who are watching, you know, as always, shop locally. It makes a difference. And thanks for watching the Workforce Connection. And we'll be back at you with another episode in the months ahead. Thanks, Rob. Great. Thank you very much.